old. So we had a professional organizer come work on our kitchen today. I am so like, cause y'all know I had a whole moment that I shared partly with y'all on the vlog a few weeks ago about just feeling like my house was a mess and things are piling up and I just couldn't mentally like wrap my head around trying to get my house together on top of doing everything else, right? So we hired this professional organizer and she just like killed it. Like just did such a good job. So I'm about to show y'all how it looks right now. She just left. I'm about to have her do the whole house at this point. Like I just, look at this y'all. It's so beautiful. She had cleared all the top of everything, like organized everything, compartment, every, like this, come on. Y'all, I'm about to show y'all. She organized this area right here, our little mini bar situation, our medicine cabinet. She labeled everything. So it's like kids medicine. And then she's got all of our other stuff in there as well. Then the pantry, y'all, this is this is the, the moment. Okay, y'all, look at this. I wish I would have done a before video because this would have been such a transformation. But y'all, look at the organization, the labeling, like, what? And I feel like people do this themselves and I'm like, how? Cause I just don't have it in me. I couldn't do this by myself. Then we have our drawers. So she got a little coffee area here, the teas and it. Like, do y'all see this? And here she's actually coming back in a couple days to add some hooks here for our mugs and stuff. So this will even be more beautiful. And then yeah, she did all of our kitchen drawers and stuff. What's your favorite part? Oh, the rotating? Yeah. It's just small things that we didn't even think about, wouldn't think to think about that she thought about and it just makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, it just makes it, it, I don't know why it makes us so happy, but it really does. Like the organization is unmatched. Like, I don't know, it just makes my anxiety like at ease. <laughs> but yeah, so she organized all this stuff, all the containers and everything for us. And then even down here, y'all look at underneath. What? She even folded the plastic bags. Like what? I just can't. And we are, we are just in love. Hey y'all, how's it going? I was just sitting here as Sarai's taking a nap and over the past few days, I have been really thinking about what my birth experience is going to be like. And as you all know, I am doing all of my prenatal appointments and things through a birth center. And at this birth center, I have the option to do a water birth. And so it's something that I've always just been fascinated by and am actually, you know, planning to do at this point. And and I've been actually starting to visualize what it's gonna be like. And um, I have been a little like blocked, I think, from imagining what it will be like, because I think I still had, you know, some fear, just this unknowingness about it, what it's really gonna be like, and kind of like just being so like involved in like the moments of this pregnancy that like now that we're in the third trimester and it's getting closer, I'm thinking about it now. And actually I feel like God is giving me like vision for it and not just giving me vision for it but giving me the understanding of the power that I have over it and that there's so many things that can actually allow the experience to be a I wouldn't say painless one but a pleasurable one in the sense that you know with things like hypnobirth practices and really for me I haven't really dug too deep into different techniques and stuff it's outside of like breathing techniques and things like that I think also too is that I've been having more frequent like Braxton Hicks contractions lately which this time around I know that that's what it is versus like I think with Sarai I just thought I was cramping and didn't realize that like I was actually having like these practice contractions and so what I've been doing through those practice contractions is practicing my breathing techniques that I learned when I did do birthing classes before I had Sarai. Obviously I'm not in control and anything can happen right but there is a sense of power that I do have over my mind right and our mind spirit 
spirit body is all connected. And so I just have this belief and this feeling in me that, you know, I strongly believe that I can do this naturally. I strongly believe that this birth experience will be empowering. It will be just a out of body experience that it will be beautiful. The other day, you know, I was sitting in Sarai's room putting her to sleep and I was sitting on the floor and she has this like sound machine in her room and she loves the waves. This night, the ocean waves were on. And so I'm sitting there. I'm not patting her on the back, y'all, because I'm trying to get her to just, you know, be able to go to sleep on her own. But she had a little bit of trouble that night. So I just sat in there with her for a minute and I'm sitting in there and I took the time to like really kind of meditate and listen to the waves and kind of connect to this idea that contractions are like waves. Even when they come, you literally feel the buildup like a wave and then it gets to its peak, but you know that when it gets to its peak, it has to come back down. And so like when I was taking my birthing classes, the instructor told us is that, you know, when you're having a contraction, you wanna continue to breathe through it because it will come to an end. It's not like this like steady ongoing pain. As I was sitting in Sarai's room and I'm listening to these waves and I decided to take a moment to meditate and I'm really breathing with the waves and I'm almost kind of like practicing like these waves come and they go and they come and they go and it's a temporary experience this idea that labor is temporary that I don't need to be afraid and so understanding that the pain is temporary and even like breaking down this idea that it's pain that's something that my brain has to decide if something is pain or not and so even trying to help myself not think of the contractions as painful, but thinking of the contractions as steps closer to my child. Just surrounding my mind and my spirit with that mentality and with that mindset is something that I'm actively doing now until we get to that day when he finally arrives. I'm excited about it, which is so weird because I feel like when I was thinking about actually giving birth to Sarai, I was so scared. I was so scared the whole time especially with like all the the statistics about black women you know in hospitals and all that stuff like that stuff really was getting to me back then like for real but the feeling of her exiting me you know mark is right there crying and pushing me to keep going and just just empowering me and me feeling literally this life come out of me and being able to see Sarai's face for the first time and her just be right on my chest afterwards. It was such an empowering experience that no one ever told me about. Like no one ever told me that birth could feel so good. And this go around like, I think part of it is because I'm in a birth center that is so amazing. And I need to do a whole video just on my birth center experience but I just feel so at peace this go around I'm actually getting excited about experiencing this birth and I don't know if I'm gonna share it online I don't know if we're gonna record it or film it or whatever I'm not sure yet I need to talk to Mark about that I need to pray about that a little bit but yeah I'm getting there we officially hit 30 weeks tomorrow so we getting there y'all we getting there so prenatal update we went for our chiropractor visit which I almost skipped this week because I've been going weekly for like the past six weeks. But I like specifically started feeling like my hips were hurting me a lot the past couple days, especially at night when I was sleeping. So when I went today, she was like, oh yeah, like you must have like gone through a growth spurt because your belly is like significantly like out more. And I was like, I knew it because I feel like just that little bit of extra weight and honestly like not even just the weight but just like the how out my belly is it did like it changed the way I slept so she was like I'm glad like you know we're being able to get you fixed up today and I was glad too because I felt like so much better after that but then we went and had my prenatal appointment and I had my blood drawn last appointment so this week they were just reviewing my blood work with me and it turns out that my hemoglobin is low. It's like technically I'm supposed to be at like a 12 is like the lowest point that they want you to be at and I was at like 11.9 and so they suggested that I start taking chlorophyll. So I'm going to be doing 50 milliliters of chlorophyll in the morning and at night is what they prescribed for me to do. So in two weeks when I go back for my next appointment, we'll draw blood again and make sure that I've 
you know cross that 12 threshold but this is the chlorophyll that i got at the birth center today it's liquid chlorophyll it's nature's sunshine it's the mint one i'll see how it tastes i don't know i've never taken chlorophyll before i was just talking to mark and i was just like saying how this is just another reason why i really love going to my birth center because it's like in a hospital setting maybe they would have prescribed me medication i think i had low hemoglobin when i was pregnant with sarai but nobody's ever said anything about it and so i just appreciate you know like a natural solution to something like that because in a hospital setting i feel like they would have never suggested chlorophyll they would have either not said anything like they did before or they would have told me you know take this medication or take this or whatever and so yeah i just appreciate the fact that like chlorophyll can be a solution for me and just to make sure that like i'm safe the baby's safe and we have a successful smooth like labor so yeah so those are the updates for week 30 of my prenatal appointments really sarah you just came over here Quickness. Took What's my shoes. <laughs> Sarai, you be knowing when something new come in this house. You don't want to open the box? There's nothing in there for you, mama. She just want the bag. Oh, you just want the bag? <laughs> what? Or you don't box. even care about the shoes. You don't care what's in there, mama? Here, well, show us the shoes, babe. I got these slides today, y'all. Aren't they cute? Aren't they cute, mama? They're pretty. Okay, you don't care. <laughs> you care? I do care. I'm excited about them and they're super comfy. I can tell she's excited. Before well, trying them on, I was like, oh, they're okay, they're cute. But trying them on, they're so comfortable. Hey y'all, good morning. So today is shoot day. I am getting ready to shoot some content for Lancome. Sorry, stop, put, put my pants down. I'm shooting some content for Lancome and I'm specifically shooting some sunscreen. And so we're gonna shoot outside today because we wanna really let, you know, the sun really amplify the content. So that's what we're about to do. But I wanted to tell y'all how I prep for especially skincare posts or skincare content. I have to do a whole routine. So I had to clean my brows up because listen, when y'all like this close, when the camera is that close, you have to make sure that everything looks clean and everything. So I literally just spent the last hour prepping my skin so I cleaned up my brows i also did some dry shaving on my face because that also helps with that glow like the fact that my skin is even glistening like this you can achieve that sometimes the little little fine hairs on your face actually make you look more matte so i did that and then i also took a tool which i don't even know if i used the right tool but basically i have this little like skincare kit and it's a little tool with a hole or it's like a copper circle and basically i just use that to remove all the dirt underneath like my pores especially in my nose in this whole area like that's where I get the most like dirt buildup so I did that on my nose and then I added on a, like a clay mask in my pore area I used actually the Ole Henriksen cold pore clay mask and I put that basically anywhere that I get large pores so really here my nose underneath here my chin so that all of that looks like way smoother than it did Sarai Give me that. No, come on. She trying to steal the product I'm trying to shoot with later. And then I did a moisture mask. So that's where my face is now. The last step I did was tone. Since the product that I'm gonna be using in the content is actually a primer and a moisturizer and a sunscreen, I am only going to be using that after all of this. So I use the Fenty Fat Water to tone, which is also a serum. So treating and making sure like the pH balance is right so that we can have nice skin for this content so yeah we're about to shoot that i'm waiting for mark to get off the phone <laughs> so we can get this thing going <laughs> 